Hey friend, welcome back. There have been so many awesome things happening in the industry in the last couple of weeks. And today we're going to talk about one of them, which is Figma's announcements. You probably have heard, you probably have seen some of those signals and some of those themes, but today I'm going to walk you through my thoughts and give you an additional perspective of what I think about it. One thing to nip it in the butt and what's something I'm going to push away is the actual tool of Figma which is the UI free, you know, the redesign of Figma. It looks awesome, it looks glossy, but damn, I feel bad for all those tutorial makers. And if you're one of them, probably it was a rough weekend and you're probably still recovering from that. So God bless you. For everyone else, fo, let's jump aboard and let's discuss what that could mean. So Figma AI, awesome stuff, right? Well, if you look at the demos, they're really impressive. So for example, this one is from Mengto, create me a SaaS app and it generates very, I guess, basic in a way, like a very marketing e-commerce type of website or like a, just a brochureware type of website for SaaS maybe. And as you can see, you can adjust a lot of different things from style prompt to the sizes to the actual almost like a design system integrations of uh, bigger themes and you can apply them. That's awesome. You can round the buttons and mass, adjust the text, and then you can create landing pages for Figma. And that's obviously covers the basics of the design. Other impressive features were ways to interact with the actual AI to help you prototype the things. There is also renaming of layers and masks. A lot of those kind of small plugins or additive features, which actually are meaningful. Like I was truly impressed of what it could help a product designer using Figma every day do, because it's gonna make it everything much more efficient. And of course, as these things, new signals get traction, there's always some resistance to the change. So some people kind of commented that, hey, this is only gonna be good for very basic designs, for website designs, e-commerce websites, or some sort of app flows entry level like they're not going to be complex enterprise or deep tech type of features and whilst we haven't seen many demos of what that other realm of a deeper ux could look like there have been quite a few examples from the figma team trying to demo it publicly basically and saying hey give me a prompt i'm gonna show you what the output from the ai could be like here's a good challenge for you from a real project. You're working with an art museum to build a database of their collection, design the UI to input the dimensions of new work. And the actual output is pretty basic. That's kind of like a wireframe, a very simple wireframe at that. Probably whiteboard worthy, not really even low fidelity in digital means worthy. Make an interface for a toll bridge operator. Okay, this is much more complex challenge, right? Obviously much more thought out looking immediately. Something what a designer would be able to pull up maybe for a workshop or for some sort of initial iterations of a product. So there's a dashboard, report, settings, support, very basic features too. And I'm going to cover exactly what I think their model is based upon and how it's trained right now because of these type of features. There's obviously there is a status indicator. There is some sort of dashboard shifting of the apps options, I would presume, under that waffle icon search, some more features sharing. So it's all about collaboration, which is quite odd because, again, this is toll booth operator uh, dashboard, right? So you could argue it is a bit too generic for it or maybe too inflated. Overviews within dashboards, reports, settings, KPIs or metrics indicating progress, deltas in terms of a change. And this is where I guess UX would have to come in because again, it's made generically for everyone, but does it actually answer needs? Obviously it doesn't. It's probably too much for what the toll booth operator would need. Detailed warm wood grain, textured, skeomorphic, mobile web, gets the brown theme color from it and it has basic understanding of the Figma features, but it doesn't do anything skeomorphic. You immediately can kind of position it and know where the limits are for it. It doesn't have enough data to support those prompts just yet, like skeomorphic, let's say, and so forth. There's apps, other interfaces for enterprise tools, e-commerce side, again, as I mentioned before, which is probably going to be its stronger suit and so forth. There's a lot of examples you can Google for it and you're going to explore from the actual team what they're showing. But it leads me to the point of how they trained this thing. Figma, as you know, acquired Diagram before and as such, all that IP is theirs and hidden. Now, I presume that a lot of these things were trained by the Diagram folk using 
libraries from Figma, the free resources which you might be submitting yourself. I only presume that's the case. That's why you get so many generic outputs because it blends all of it and tries to predict what you need based off the closest match, let's say, or vectorized match, which is closest to it, maybe through synonyms or other type of interpretation, but they basically display you the information which already exists. Now, the actual training is limited. They are planning to open the training to the public on August 15 and you can opt out. Now, this is really important to call out before I jump into the next segment of this video. Now, there's a lot of legal implications here too or legal from a side that you might be breaking NDAs or infringing on your employer's IPs, maybe your customer's IPs, client IPs. If you work on something professionally, there might be a need now to include a clause that, hey, we are sharing the data also with Figma. So there's a lot of considerations to think about, but if you are concerned about your privacy or your employer's privacy or infringement of intellectual property, you can opt out through Figma settings. It's quite easy to find. That's a difference between Adobe, I guess, and Figma, because Adobe just kind of said a blank statement, hey, all you do belongs to us and we can do whatever we want to train our models and, you know, leaving it at that. Obviously, both are the same energy, but giving you control of to opt out is a big step in my books. And there is obviously another toggle for you to just use the features as they are. But I don't know how they're going to be splitting the models across different user types or if it's just going to be one model for all and as such is going to be trained on a lot of different use cases. But I don't know how much value you're going to get if it doesn't train on your data and how individual or personalized it is to the case. Because if you run this massive design system and you want to work with that design system and reuse it, you kind of need a very personalized model. And now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about what this actually means for product design and everyone else in UX. So there is a lot of concerns that this is actually going to replace or it's the end of UX UI or product design or UI design. I still call it BS. You probably heard me several times in different videos stating that UX is much larger than product design itself or how we limit it right now in terms of prototyping to learn or prototyping immediately to actually uncover some insights and kind of like quickly coming up with ideas. That's where this Figma feature is going to be instrumental because anyone, absolutely anyone can jump on this democratization bus could be product manager, could be your family member who has no idea how to design things, but knows how to use Figma, could be that owner of a business who knows how to open Figma. They can kind of come into this and quickly prototype things or quote unquote prototype to give the initial ideas and bring them life. That's where I think the key value prop for this is, is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you are very experienced with 20, 30 years of experience in design or you're like just a newbie. This is kind of creating new use cases for anyone to for a workshop or a conversation or other communication with professional team you include it. They could just bring it up and say, hey, I kind of thought about this, you know, problem. And hey, this is how the solution could look like. Obviously, it's a starting step which you would need to take into your design workflows, into your workshops, into your communication with a client, with the teammates, with engineers, product managers, you name it. But basically, it's a very starting step which is not even a framed problem. That's where I think this adds most value at its current state and for a future to be actually. Like, let's just put this right. If we don't zoom out for the next decade or five years in, and we just talk about the next couple of years, this is very incremental, very exploratory use case for it. There is nothing more than that because we tend to mix the timeframes with the reality of things. We tend to kind of get the futures wrong. We tend to project way too in advance and we think that this is tomorrow. But in reality, you know, it's going to take time for those either dystopian or utopian vibes or themes to kind of take hold. And another angle to this or like how important this is, is if you think about UI kits or Figma libraries used back in the day or sketch libraries like sketch app resources, I think, .com used to be my go-to when I used Sketch back in the day as an IC. I would literally go and say, I need a finance app because I have this workshop to run, or I need to show something on a mood board, or I need to prepare for ideations to create some sort of stimulus and say, hey, these are great app examples. Could we talk about the features or things of that nature, what you like, what you don't like, maybe from visual interaction design standpoint, X, Y, Z, with the stakeholders, right, in the room. 
So for those cases, I would still go to UI kits or Figma libraries later on, and I would download and try to copy paste a lot of bits and put it into a new canvas, basically, whatever the objective actually was, maybe to spark more communication, maybe to ideate and create the stimulus again, or maybe something else. But basically, I would just do the same thing what this Figma AI is gonna help you do with extra steps. And that's the exciting bit, because all these AI tools just shorten the journey for you to do the things you actually need to do. Or that boring stuff, let's say, I know a lot of people love to research UI patterns on a web, maybe using Mobin or other platforms. Bring those patterns to their team to showcase and maybe map things out or things of that nature, create collages, mood boards. But this is gonna make it so much quicker. It's gonna be, again, instant, as you saw from the examples. Again, how good the actual flow is gonna look like is a question. How off piece is gonna go is gonna be a question, but as the models train themselves or are trained by human, we obviously are gonna get better. But that's a zoomed out view. And this is how I think about these things. What does that mean for product design? Is product design is done? Of course not, obviously not. This is one sliver within the bigger phase of a product design. And one quite important thing to take a look at, AI powered UI UX design projection from A16Z. I know, Z, Z, it's Z. A lot of the tools, like if you take something like Figma, again, is coming into pre-production. There is still a production because product design expands now into the actual engineering. And I know that a lot of the Figma features like death mode and things of that nature are kind of like tapping into this where we're going to get closer and closer to that design engineering realm. It's inevitable. Those disciplines and the tasks and the goals we fulfill are going to get closer and closer. Now, what isn't going to get closer is what happens before that. Because as a product designer, you're not just there to be a production machine. I know a lot of the people jump into prototypes and things of that nature. What's going to be important is going to be, you know, the old school IA, the information architecture, the actual research. And I'm not talking about super deep user research, which user researchers might be doing, but product designers need to do enough research to do good design. It's just that simple. You cannot even prototype anything good if you don't expose yourself to many signals, especially the human signals, to understand who we are and what their experience has to be. So their stakeholder management strategy, the product strategy itself and product skills is gonna come into play so massively here, but it kind of cushions this thing which you see on my screen. It comes around it. If you take something like a brand new AI tool from Figma or Miro or any other suite, it's just a tool. It's gonna squeeze somewhere and it's gonna help you to do a task A or task J or task M in the alphabet of the tasks you have to do as a product designer. But that's about it. Interestingly though, this specific diagram splits the actual tools into design generation, which is massive. This is exactly what I would use Figma by way or Figma AI as I hinted before. It's gonna be great to just spark those ideas for anyone. I know democratizing design is not the goal, but we should allow people to show us something which is wrong so we can correct them. That's gonna be always the case always has been the case and always again will be the case for the years to come. That's just part of a design. We always have to course correct, especially if we do good design. Design to code, I like animal is again, no endorsements here, but you could kind of understand exactly what sliver within the product design workflows it takes or what it helps you do better in your job. Then code generation and then production. Again, this is very production focused. And I would even challenge the A16Z that they should think holistically and not box UX as a UI UX or just product design as like, oh, this is just prototyping and nothing else. There's so much more we do behind the scenes. And as such, so much more could be presented here. If I would remake this, remake it with a less interaction design bias and expand it and just almost like before pre-production have a problem framing section where you have the Miro, you have your Duff sale, you have other tools which basically expand. But you as a product designer, you can't help it but be involved in a lot of those. And a lot of media and social influencers could tell you to be afraid 
and not excited about this, but I would be excited about this. Because if you now would kind of object and say, hey, I'm not doing this, well, you're not gonna kind of disqualify yourself from anything because you can learn those tools and those tools are gonna be so easy to use in the future and get even easier as you go that you can spend a couple of hours and you know, and I think, Figma AI is one of those things. Once you get the prompts right and you know exactly the extent of the features, you know, in a weekend you can pick it up. So you're not gonna miss out on it, but kind of shutting the doors and being very opposing is definitely not yielding any success. And as such, are product designers cooked? Nah, not at all. If you like this video, make sure to leave a comment or smash the like button or subscribe. And of course, check other videos, stick around. I appreciate every each one of you. And on that note, I'll see you next time.